here's the drive. And then here's the wet. Yo guys, Ponchi here, and today I'm gonna show you how to use the compressor on your Analog Rhythm Mark II. Let's go. All right guys, so we went through the compressor a little bit on the FX video that I did. I'll link that above if you haven't checked that one out. But today we'll go into it a little more in depth. So again, we'll go through each of these parameters. So threshold basically sets when the compressor kicks in. Now, if your wave is, you know, reaching all the way to zero dB, then your threshold can basically be all the way at 127 and it'll most likely be kicking in. So say your your peaks of your sound wave only reach like maybe 30, 40 dB, then you're probably gonna want it to be a little lower here. But basically, in essence, it's possible for the compressor to not even be kicking in based on your threshold. If your threshold is all the way up here to 127, it's very possible that it might not even be kicking in at all. So your threshold basically controls when the compressor kicks in. Now the attack and the release also control when the compressor kicks in, but that has more to do with, if you say you have a wave and you draw a box around certain parts of the wave, the left side of the box would be the attack and then the right side of it would be the release. So Using the attack and release, you can have the compressor only kick in or respond to certain parts of the wave rather than the whole thing. So your MUP, that stands for makeup gain. So in essence, what a compressor does is it takes, well, we'll talk about the ratio as well. The ratio and the makeup gain are related because what the ratio does for example, is when you have a one to two ratio, for every two dB of gain, it will reduce that to one dB. It spits out one dB instead of two. Um, so of course, if you raise your ratio to one to four, for every four dB of gain, it'll spit out one. So a compressor is essentially taking a louder signal and reducing it. That's it in a nutshell, but of course there's, you know, kind of more to it than that. So your makeup gain, what that does is being as you're reducing the amount of gain, you use your makeup gain to bring the level back to where it was. Because to me, the way to set a compressor is you want to you want the output level to be the same as the input level. Because what that does is it allows the compressor, the sound of the compressor to sh still shine through rather than just make the signal louder, which is totally not what you want to do with your compressor. Because if the signal is louder, if your compress all your compressor is doing is making it louder, that will almost always sound better to you than what it was before. Because for some weird reason, psychologically, our ears, when we hear something louder, we generally think that it's better, which is in essence the, the whole deal with the loudness wars. That's another video for another time, but the whole loudness wars is basically people mastering their songs louder and louder and basically to people psychologically, the louder one will always sound better than the quieter one. When in reality, that's probably not always the case in terms of like mixing and stuff. But anyway, that's a separate conversation. So depending on what your ratio is, you'll use your MUP, your makeup gain, to basically offset the gain reduction that it does. So that's what that's for. So the SEQ, 
that basically stands for sidechain EQ. So all that means is with LPF, you have off, LPF, HPF, and HIT. Now with off, of course, your compressor will, it'll act the same way without the sidechain EQ. So with it off, of course, your compressor will be the same that it was basically responding to the whole signal rather than just part of it. The sidechain EQ will basically take that signal and then EQ it to a point where it'll only affect certain parts of the frequency. So LPF, that basically stands for low pass filter, as you might have guessed. So that will make the compressor only respond to mostly the low frequencies. So if you really want to compress your low end, you would use LPF. Now, another way of looking at this is kind of like multi-band compression in a way, except instead of having multiple bands, in this case, you could only have one band. So if you're familiar with multi-band compression, then you'll, you'll kind of have a good idea of what to do with this. Now, HPF, of course, high pass filter, that makes it so your compressor only reacts to the high frequencies and a lot less to the bass. And then the interesting one here is HIT, which is basically a balanced EQ. So HIT is not the same as having the sidechain EQ off. They're a little bit different. HIT will more kind of level it out so it it the compressor reacts to both frequencies fairly equally the low and the highs whereas if you have it off it'll just react to you know if say your low end is a little more prominent your compressor is more often than not gonna mostly respond to the low frequencies whereas if your high frequencies are a little more jarring, I guess you could say, your compressor will end up responding to those more. And that's with it off. So if you wanna just control what you're compressing, you definitely wanna use the sidechain EQ. So, you know, I, I, usually, I usually compress the low end more, so I'd use the LPF sidechain EQ, but sometimes you might wanna do the HIT because then it'll respond to the whole thing a little more evenly, regardless of whether your beat is low end heavy or high end heavy, a lot of hi hats or whatever. So, so you want to just kind of experiment with that. You know, I would recommend starting with it off at first. So we'll go ahead and leave it there for now. Mix. This one is interesting. So it's as you can see at the top, it says dry wet mix. So if you have it all the way to the left the signal that is being spit out of the compressor is just your dry signal. Your dry signal is pass, just passing through the compressor and that's what it's spitting out. If you have it all the way to the right, that's your wet signal, which is 100% compressor signal. So the interesting thing with this, you may have heard of something called parallel compression. Now, that's basically what the mix knob is for. If you put it roughly in the middle, give or take, then you are essentially getting a little bit of your dry signal with a little bit of your compressed signal. Of course, in the middle would be equally both. So what you can do with that, I'll give you a quick rundown of parallel compression, otherwise known as New York compression to some people. But uh, basically, the idea with parallel compression is that you compress, you heavily compress your signal, almost to the point where it's over compressed, I would say. And then you back it off so you don't have 100% of the wet signal coming through. You back it off, you know, I would start with the dry signal all the way to zero. And then you just turn up your compression enough to where the super over compressed signal sits just under the dry signal really nicely 
and it gives it a certain sound, you know, it gives it a, a certain punchier sound that uh, a lot of people are, are used to actually in a lot of big records. So, and then of course volume, uh, this is just the volume of the output signal, of the compressed signal. The, the volume is taken into account after the mix knob. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and clear my, compressed, uh, my compressor menu. So just hold amp and hold clear. If you're not familiar with my FX video that I already did, you press FX and then amp to get to the compressor menu. So, and also keep in mind, like I mentioned before in the other video, the compressor is a master compressor, meaning it responds to all the pads all at once. All the pads are routed into the master bus and then the compressor is an effect that affects the master bus. So it affects all of these equally, which is why they have the sidechain EQ option. Because being as you can't, you can't compress each pad individually, you can use the sidechain EQ to only affect basically, in a way, certain pads. You know, because like for example, your bass drum pad, you know, and your toms, like your lower toms or whatever, whatever it is you might have on your pads, if you just wanted to affect those lower end ones, the lower end pads, then of course you would use the LPF sidechain EQ. So, um, and then say, you know, you have hi-hats, cymbals and stuff, say you only wanna compress those, rather than do it individually on each pad, you would just change this to HPF, because then the compressor would react mostly just to the, the hi-hats and the cymbals, so. And even, uh, you know, if you have like a really high-pitched clap, um, you know, then it'll, it'll kind of rope those into there. You know, again, just look at it like you're on an equalizer and, you know, say like the hot, the top half would be the HPF sidechain EQ and then the lower half would be the LPF. So, so that's, those are all the settings. So let's check it out here with some sound. So I have a beat here. So the attack goes from, th these measurements are in milliseconds, just like a, a compressor on your DAW or anything like that. So 0 0.03 milliseconds, so that's a super quick attack. So all that means is that your compressor will kick in just right away. It'll take into account that transient. The transient of your sound wave is that peak, the first part of your wave. So, you know, if you look at any kind of, uh, you know, bass drum or snare drum, the, uh, tr the transient is that first initial crack of the snare drum or the bass drum. So if you have your attack set super low like this, then it will essentially come in, the compressor will start before that transient even even hits because again this is in milliseconds so it's super fast so the attack goes all the way from 0 0.03 all the way up to 30 and you know you might ask yourself why doesn't it go past 30 in reality for drums you don't really need it to go past 30 i know on some on some daws you know it, it can go as high as you know in the hundreds or or more but in reality, you don't really, you don't need an attack higher than that, for drums at least. So, because if you imagine, you know, if your attack was in the hundreds, then it's very possible that your, uh, your compressor won't even kick in at all because the sound wave will be fizzled out by the time the compressor is even allowed to kick in. So, when do you set it to a faster and a slower attack? Basically what I was saying before about the transient, if you want it to kick in for the transient, then 
basically you'll set the attack as fast as possible. Fast meaning the lowest milliseconds possible. So if you don't want it to take into account the transient, then you'd set it to like 30, for example. So what that does is basically ensures that your transient isn't touched at all. And then the compressor will only be affecting the sound wave after the transient. So why would you do that? You may ask if you're compressing the transient, like we said before, that's like the attack of a snare drum or the attack of a bass drum. So if you're gonna compress that transient, you're gonna lose some of that attack. You're gonna, gonna tame it a little bit. So I'm gonna go with 30 because I wanna leave the transient alone, the attack. So we'll go ahead and do 30 for an attack. The release is in seconds. So point one, the way to look at that is basically 100 milliseconds. So to go all the way to one, that's one second, which is the equivalent of 1,000 milliseconds. If you go all the way up to two seconds, that's 2,000 milliseconds. So A1 and A2 are basically automatic. In essence, what that does a1 and A2 are automatic release, so A2 will be slightly longer than A1. So what that does is essentially it will stop the compressor at the end of the wave. And it, it tries to do that automatically. Um, of course, it, automatic stuff is not always the most reliable, which is why they have two automatic settings. So for now, we'll just do A1, being as that's a little bit faster than, than A2. If you were gonna compress like a synth sample in your analog rhythm, you might wanna use A2. But if you're gonna just set it for drums, then you'd probably use A1 because drum sound waves are generally shorter than um, like synth waves, for example. But that, that being said, cymbals also are longer, have a longer decay than just a snare drum or a bass drum. So if I was gonna compress the cymbals, like we were saying before, I would use HPF on the sidechain EQ, and then I would probably use A2 on the release because you would want the compressor to compress the, you know, as much of that symbol as you can. So I would go for A2 at that point, being as A2 would be a little bit longer than A1. So if you go back to the default settings, it actually, it starts at 0 0.03 attack and 0 0.4 release. So if you have it set that way, it's essentially going to make it a little less punchy so let's try that. So this is the dry signal. And then this is the wet signal. So you can hear there's clearly a reduction in low end. You can see that the, the high end is, is pretty similar, but it's, it's also a little noticeably quieter but not like the, the low end. The low end just almost completely disappears. So again, let's set our makeup gain. There you go, the makeup gain is set to where it's, the dry signal is the same level as the wet signal. And essentially what we've done here is kind of evened out the low end a little bit. There's only essentially two reasons why you'd want to compress something. And so one of them is to make all your volumes more even, the volumes of, of your beat as a whole. Um, keep in mind, if you introduce something like a uh, synth sample, then that's going to 
make your compressor act differently than if you are just running beats out of the analog rhythm. So if you want to add a synth into your pads, or you're trying to use your analog rhythm as a standalone or something, then your compression, you're going to want to set your compressor differently. Figure out what you want out of your compressor first. And then secondly, um, you know, you have to just go through each setting individually and set it appropriately for the, the situation. So again, just to recap, either you're using your compressor to even out the volumes or you're using your compressor to essentially, basically as an effect. Those are basically your, your two reasons why you'd want to compress. You might be familiar with the pumping sound that a lot of people refer to. Let's, let's try doing some parallel compression on this. So I would turn my ratio up and then I would turn the threshold down. We can leave it at one to four. You'd want to use a fast attack for this. And then, so let's start the beat. For this, for parallel compression, you'd probably want to turn your threshold down a bit, like quite a lot. So you're heavily compressing. And then we'll use our makeup gain to even out the levels. We're almost there. Let's turn our threshold down even more, in fact. Now, this is using it as an effect because we're completely changing the sound of the beat itself. Rather than the first method, which is what I told you about using it to even out the volumes of all your different pads. So let's go back and forth between the dry and the wet mix here. So here's a dry. Then here's the wet. So you can hear that the hi-hats are kind of elongated. And it, it almost appears as if the hi-hats have like a different, it's almost as if if someone was playing this beat, it's almost as if they're playing the hi-hats in a different way. What we need to do is turn up the mix knob until, until it sounds good, basically, to our ears. You know, and that's a subjective thing, unfortunately. Here's what it sounds like with uh, just dry. You know, in this case, the, the kick is pretty overpowering. Whereas here's what it sounds with the dry signal, with the, the heavily compressed wet signal just mixed under the dry signal. It's a little more even. And if you turn it up, it's also kind of punchier. But again, this is just a certain, this is just a certain sound of its own. Parallel compression. So, so I showed you a couple different ways. Um, you know, I hope that helps you guys. I know this one was probably, the compressors are really tough. It took me, I mean, it, Everyone's different, you know, it took me a really long time to be able to 
to use compressors correctly without killing the sound for one. And then it also took me a long time to just kind of figure out what each setting did. Um, you know, and a good way to, to learn compressors is if you, if you have a DAW or anything like that, start out using, you know, record your analog rhythm into your DAW and start compressing it on your DAW with different presets and see what happens. Um, unfortunately, the analog rhythm doesn't have any presets for the compressor, but that's okay. You know, don't let that scare you. So, you know, if, if you ever mess up, of course, just, you know, hold amp and, and press clear and you'll start back at zero, back at the default settings. Um, in reality, this right here is a, a certain compressor setting. It's just not triggering because of the mix knob right here. So you can start with the default compressor, but just make sure you turn up the mix knob. Otherwise, if, it, if the mix is at zero, you're only getting the dry signal. It is compressing it, it's, you're just not hearing it because it's only coming through dry. So if we turn up our mix knob, you know, all the way to the wet setting, you can hear that it's doing its job compared to the dry signal. So, I would recommend the easiest way to get started, start with the default setting and then turn up the mix knob all the way. Do your makeup game so your, your compressed signal is equal level to the dry one. And then just use the mix knob to find a good in-between point, a good parallel compression sound, you know, maybe right there, right about the middle. So you can see, you can hear that your snare and your kick are a little more even, regardless of the volume that you have each one set to. So this is, you know, this is just another way of, of the default setting is another way of just evening out the volume. So anyway, hope that helps you guys. If you have a question, leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so now. Don't forget to ring that bell if you want notifications of when I release videos. I release videos every week. Um, I'm starting to do a lot more shorts now too, but I try to release at least once a week in terms of uh, a full length video like this. But shorts, I'm trying to do those more often so you can look forward to those in between my main videos. So, um, you know, I might do a follow-up, especially if you guys have questions down below, I will definitely do a follow-up to this compressor video. Just being as compression is probably one of the most, one of the hardest things to understand about the analog rhythm, believe it or not. Um, you know, anything else you can kind of just like look up how to do it, but even in the manual, there's no settings for, there's, there's nothing that tells you how to set a compressor. It just tells you what each of the parameters do, but nothing really can tell you how to set your compressor. So just keep practicing. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.